Hey everyone, welcome to the ninth lesson of the Getting Stirred with Motion Graphics course here for Tuts Plus. My name is Vincent Nguyen, and today we're going to be talking about typography, specifically kinetic typography within After Effects. And this is a very popular and trendy kind of style for motion graphics, especially if you're going to do a lot of client work. So I have this project set up here, and let me just show you kind of what we're going to be creating today. This is typography in After Effects. This is typography in After Effects. So as you can see, it's a pretty cool and very simple and clean style. Um, basically, we're going to be talking about the audio interaction, how it kind of interacts with the audio, how it syncs up with the audio, and then we're just going to talk about how to transition from you know one type to another. And we'll briefly talk about simple typography tips as well as how to achieve a nice looking result with some textures and motion blur and such like that. So without further ado, let's hop into After Effects and let's create a new composition. So composition, new composition. We're gonna call this one typography. And mine's gonna be 720p, and I'm gonna make mine, um, let's just make it 10 seconds long so we have a lot of room to work with. So we have a blank composition here. Now, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna drag your audio layer in. And this audio layer can have text, can have words, you know, whatever you want. The point is you wanna have some kind of audio so we can kind of practice syncing our our shapes or text layers with the audio. So in this demonstration, I have a simple voiceover narrative that I did here. And remember, if you hit LL on the keyboard, you can bring up the waveforms. Nothing too complicated here, just some simple narration. And again, this could be a song, this could be a quote from a movie, uh, it just doesn't really matter. So you want to get an audio track, and this is what it sounds like. This is typography in After Effects. So if, if you remember from the last tutorial, um, we're going to try to set some markers here where we think the text should appear. So again, we're going to hit the asterisk key on the number pad to kind of mark a place every single time we press the asterisk key. So if I just bring the render region down here, and I'm going to do a RAM preview, and then whenever you feel like there should be another text or another transition, you're going to hit the asterisk key. So I'm going to do that really quick. This is typography in After Effects. This is typography in After Effects. This. So I did a little bit more than I should have. Notice how I went through it twice. The first time I couldn't really get the first one, so I just waited till it finished and then I went back again and did the first one. So it should be somewhere around here. This is typography in After Effects. And you know, you're just going to be playing around with this stuff. So I believe this goes over here, this goes over here. This is typography. This is typography in After Effects. This and this is probably the stray one here. So this is just a simple uh, rough cut and we're gonna see how it all works out once you create our text layer. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create our background layer. And we're gonna call this BG. And of course, we're gonna bring in the amazing ramp effect. And I'll accept my ramp to radial. And for this demonstration, let's go ahead and make it just a nice bright white color. And adjust the points here. So we just kind of have this subtle vignette effect. And let's go ahead and create our type. And this is probably the most important part. After all, it is called typography. So what you want to do is you want to create a series of text. And the easiest way to do that is just to lay it out all first. So I'm going to create a new text layer. I'm going to call this this. And the goal is to use different size fonts, different kind of kerning, different styles, different um, you know, bold, italicized, and you can change the font size. I mean, you want to give a lot of variation to this thing, and you want to make sure that they're kind of in the same typeface, so you don't want anything crazy, but I'm just going to scale this thing up. We're going to start off with this. And let's go ahead and rotate it, maybe 90 degrees or so, or negative 90 degrees. And we're going to start right here. This is going to be our starting text, this. And then let's go ahead and make another one. Is. And we can just set the rotation this for this one to just back to normal. Uh, we can change the font to something like, uh, I don't know, Tahoma. And we can scale it down. 
And pretty much what you want to do is you want to kind of lay out the layout ahead of time. So we just have all of our text nicely uh, set and ready in position. So we can make it ready for the camera. And I'm just going to make it bold in this case. And we're going to do this for the rest of the remaining text. So this is, uh, I believe the next one is typography. So we're going to duplicate this one. Call this typography. And then we can select another font. I'm going to select uh, maybe Rockwell here. And we'll just move it, line it up. Of course, you can be more exact with this, but this is for uh, tutorial purposes. And remember, you can play around with the different uh, colors as well. But again, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to stick with uh, maybe one style here. This is typography. And then we're going to shift to in. So we're just going to bring this up here. In. Maybe this can be a little bit different. Maybe Lucida Sands. In. And then we need After Effects. So let's just duplicate this one. And we can bring this one up. Call this After Effects. And then maybe we can change this one to franchise here. Make it a little bit larger. And then maybe we can just place this one on top. And of course, this is all personal preference. You can put in any layout you want. You can put it anywhere you want pretty much. Uh, but this is just uh, what I'm gonna do for my example here. All right, so now that we have our rough layout set up, let's go ahead and start timing this thing up so it's gonna sync with our audio. So right now we're going to start off with the first text layer, this, kind of just at the beginning right here. So we're going to leave it. The second text starts about right here approximately. So we're going to trim is down. So it's going to appear only when it hits this turn is typography, which should be somewhere right here. And again, this is just a rough cut. We're going to be fine tuning this later. Typography in somewhere around here, After Effects. And if you do a quick RAM preview, you should see how close you are. This is typography in After Effects. This is typography. So that's pretty darn close. Let's just increase this one up by a little bit. And then you should get pretty much everything in sync. This is typography in After Effects. This, typography's a little bit slow. This is typography in After Effects. So pretty darn close. That's looking pretty cool. Again, you can play around with your font. You can play around with the color and the text size, the kerning and all that stuff. I think that's pretty good for now. Let's go ahead and set up our camera. So let's create a new camera. Layer new camera. And we'll just call this camera and maybe set it to the uh, 24 millimeter, pretty wide lens. Hit OK. And then we'll just make all of our layers 3D layers so we can react it to our camera. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind in After Effects is the camera is very, very tricky. You have all these orientations and X, Y, and Z rotation. You have the position, the orbit tool. And I mean, there's just, the camera is probably the most complicated tool within After Effects. It's not as simple as you think. And there's just kind of different types of principles and such like that. So the easiest way to kind of uh, separate all the complexion and all that stuff like that is to kind of isolate one perimeter at a time. So we're going to do that with a null and that null layer is going to be our control layer for this uh, demonstration. So let's go to layer new null object and we're going to call this cam control and we're just going to parent our camera to our cam control right here and if you don't see the parent panel just kind of toggle the switches until you see the parent panel or right click go to columns and uh, select parent. So parent or pick whip the camera to the camera control. So now the camera control is going to follow the cam control and make sure that the cam control is a 3D layer. So now we can kind of move the camera around and let's start, go ahead and start animating this thing. So let's go ahead and hit P on the keyboard, uh, go to the beginning and hit a stopwatch keyframe and then go to hit R on the keyboard and let's just play around with the rotation here. And let's hit a keyframe for the orientation. 
hit U to show all the parameters. So now we just have position and orientation parameters uh, right here. And this is what we're going to use to kind of animate our typography video. So let's go ahead and line all this up in the center. We're going to make sure that the background layer is a 2D layer so it doesn't really move around. <laughs> and then we're going to adjust the camera so that our text is really nice in the center. So we're going to set the orientation to negative 90. And you know, just play around with it. So we want it to start right here, approximately. And that's pretty good. And now the next uh, text occurs about right here. So right before then, we're going to copy these keyframes and paste it. That way it's going to stay the same. It's going to stay the same from here to here. And then in a few frames forward, it's going to shift to the second one. So we're just going to zoom in a little bit. And let's go ahead and focus on the is. Uh, let's set this to zero. And we can just move it over. Maybe center it up. So basically what we have is this and it transitions is and then again we're going to paste these two last keyframes here and just paste it in so now we just have our is text staying the same and then once again once our typography text comes in we're going to start animating this thing again so just bring it forward maybe center it up like that maybe zoom in even more and then, as you can see, we didn't really change the orientation, but for consistency, I'm just going to hit a keyframe for the orientation, just so we don't get any weirdness in the transition in case we do change it. You know, it's just good workflow. So we have this, it stays the same till here, and then it's going to transition to is. It's going to stay the same till right here, and then it's going to transition to the next text. And we're just going to keep on doing this. So we're going to copy these two keyframes here, paste it in, and then we're going to focus on the in. And then we're going to hit the orientation uh, keyframe once again, just for the consistency sake. And then for right here, we're going to copy and paste these keyframes so they stay still. And then once the After Effects text comes in, we're going to animate the camera once more to focus on After Effects. And of course, you can kind of tweak this around a little bit and mess around with the path. We can maybe smooth it out a little bit by kind of selecting the path and moving the handlebars. Just so we have more organic movement compared to this choppiness linear. And let's go ahead and play this back. This is typography in After Effects. So kind of choppy. And that's because of the movement that we chose. Of course, you can find tweak this. And to kind of easy, ease all this, I'm going to highlight all these keyframes. And remember, you can hit F9 or go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. And that's just going to easy keyframes in. And remember, don't forget to play around in the Graph Editor. You can also change kind of the velocity of the transition. So if you want that nice kind of swinging whip effect, uh, don't hesitate to play around in the Graph Editor. You want to have some variation in movement. You don't want things to be linear. And you want things to be... Uh, pretty fast and pretty neat. So we have a lot of fast movement going on here, but as you can see, we have no motion blur. And the motion blur is going to play a really large role in kind of flowing things together. So if we enable motion blur for the composition, and then we enable motion blur for all the individual text layers, you're going to see we have some uh, motion blur here. And you can really see that right when we transition. So it makes quite the difference. And if I do a quick RAM preview, this is typography in After Effects. So that's essentially how you create some basic typography or kinetic typography within After Effects. We can even go a little bit further by adding a texture to this thing. So I have this paper texture here, and this is just royalty free uh, stock image. I'm going to drag it into the composition. And you can find so many free royalty free images online. But this is just a simple paper texture. Uh, I'm going to make it a 3D layer. So it reacts to the camera a little bit, as you see here. And I'm just going to scale it up a little bit, so make it a little bit wider. And again, this is going to be a texture, so don't worry too much if you're like stretching it out a little bit too much. Uh, it should be a very subtle effect. And then we're going to toggle the switches and change the mode from normal to overlay. So it's just going to overlay the texture onto everything. And as you can see, 
It makes a huge difference. It adds texture to the background, as well as it adds a lot of nice detail and texture to our text. And it makes it a lot more organic, uh, very more magazine-like, if you know what I mean. This is typography in After Effects. So just by adding that simple texture, our text looks so much better and more vibrant and just more, uh, I guess, more 3D. Now the problem with this is everything's a little bit too bright and it's kind of hard to focus on the actual main text because you have the end text right here, you have half of the typography text right here, and you kind of have this section right here. And usually you would try to kind of hide these things by zooming in a little bit more, kind of hiding the text layers. But in this case, we're just going to add a nice blur vignette to this. So create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to call this blur. And we're just going to apply a fast blur to this adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is going to cause everything to kind of blur out. And then we're going to repeat the edge pixels. And so now everything's blurred out. But we don't want everything to be blurred out. We just want the edges to be blurred out to kind of simulate that, I guess, focus look. So we're going to get the elliptical tool right here. By default, you may have the rectangle tool. Just click and hold for the ellipse tool and just draw a nice eclipse around the center of the composition. And then we're going to select subtract for the mask. So now just the edges are kind of blurred out. We're going to hit F on the keyboard to feather it out. And then we're going to hit M, M, M and just kind of increase the expansion out a little bit. So it's kind of just at the edge. And that way, it's just a very subtle effect to kind of make us focus on the actual text rather than the, all the extra stuff here. And then we can also apply a curves effect to kind of darken the edges. So if we just drag it down a little bit, you can kind of see that we're kind of darkening the edges a little bit. We can even go further by creating our own vignette. So let's go create a black solid um, just double click on the elliptical tool, set things to subtract, feather this thing out, and then hit MMM and just expand the mass expansion. Just so it kind of creates a nice vignette so we can actually focus on our primary text. And then we can create one last adjustment layer here. And we're going to call this CC for color correction. And you always want to color correct your animations. Things are not going to uh, flow perfectly in color when you first create them. So I'm going to drag a curves effect to the CC effect, uh, adjustment layer. And let's go ahead and add some warmth to this thing. So I'm going to create a nice contrast boost first. And then maybe make this a little bit warmer, pull up the reds. And then maybe decrease the blues. Just so we kind of have this warmth effect to it. And of course, you can apply drop shadows to your text. I'm going to apply a quick curves effect to the paper texture to kind of emphasize the paperness of this thing. And if we do a quick RAM preview, this is typography in After Effects. So a pretty cool effect, of course you can keep on doing this if you have a longer audio piece. You can do this for movie quotes, your own quotes, you can do it for your PSA or maybe a song that you're writing. So just a pretty neat interesting way to kind of visualize text in audio a little bit. So just a pretty cool style, you're going to be using this quite a bit in motion graphics. So uh, keep, you know, keep on practicing it, keep on trying to sync up your audio with your text layers and just have some fun because this is a very fun and kind of trendy uh, style that you're going to be using quite a bit now. So don't hesitate to play around. Uh, but this is pretty much it for this video tutorial. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about a more cinematic approach. We'll be talking about lens flares and the basics of lens flares and how to use lens flares within After Effects. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the forums. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. I know I did. My name is Vincent and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye guys.